Welcome to Make It Plain, the Eric, Key, and Cameron show. On today's show, we'll talk about the work of the church. This should be interesting. Stay tuned and study with us. This podcast is dedicated to addressing various topics from a biblical perspective, coupled with practical solutions for daily application. In essence, we want to take the Bible, which is relevant for all that we need in this life, and the one to come, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And we want to do as God commanded the prophet Habakkuk, and we simply want to make it plain. If you would like to contact us, we appreciate our viewing audience, and we appreciate you guys um, contacting us and reaching out to us. We look forward to it. Um, but if you'd like to do that regarding our show, um, if you'd like to submit questions and just talk to us or give us suggestions or... or you know, ask us to deal with things on the show. We'd love to do that. Our email address is make it plain, H-A-B-2-2 at gmail.com. We love to use your show, um, excuse me, use your comments on our show for uh, content and to drive our topics. Um, this, this episode, we are going to discuss um, the work of the church. I think that's a great, um, a great topic to discuss, especially with especially with us being in 21st century and seeing the work of the church today versus what the church looked like, you know, in the first century and the work that God has um, laid out for the church. It's interesting, just off camera, we were talking about situations and allowances and conveniences and wealth that has allowed the church to... <laughs> Um, to show and prove that we are not dealing with persecution at all. Not at all. Um, and so the work of the church is still the work of the church. And um, we have a 21st century view of the church. But but what what how often or what do you guys see to be kind of the overwhelming or the kind of the prevailing view? I guess I, I guess that would be a good good way to say it. Well, in your experiences, what is kind of like the prevailing view of uh, Christians and members of the church regarding like the church, you know, what, what, what is their prevailing view for me? Sometimes I see Christians treat the church like a social club. And that's, that's one of the prevailing views that I see. Or <clears throat> I guess I know we, we can all attest to um, the idea of, you know, a lot of people feel like everything that the church uh, needs to get done. It has to go through the preacher. Mm. You know, the, the preacher should do this, this, that, you know, I think we did an episode yes. in this season mm -hmm. um, regarding the preacher and his work. Right. Yeah. So, so, so that view kind of permeates the, the, the whole notion of um, everything the church is supposed to do. The preacher pretty much got to do it mm -hmm. or spearhead it or, or, you know, be responsible that it, that it gets done. Right. Yeah. There certainly has been a change in, you know, how, okay, so Jesus is always the face of the church, right? He's the head of the church. But we do know that people will identify churches with the preacher there. You know, who preaches yes. at a certain church and the preacher is the face of the congregation and, you know, the preacher is the one that's always out front and he's the one that's always uh, promoted and he's the one whose face is on the website and stuff like that. And it's funny, we never see that with the elders though. <laughs> the 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 ones who who have the positions and the authority, you know, we never place that much stock in our elderships, but we look at we have gotta have the preachers. So when I see it's almost like this the eldership of eldership at times is subservient to to the preacher. Yeah, and that's and that definitely should not be the case. You know, when we think about what's the elders' role, the elders' role is to to watch over the flock, to make sure, and that don't mean to micromanage the preacher and make sure the money being spent on fried chicken and <laughs> and all that stuff like that. That's not that's not the role of an of an elder. You know, but I do understand from the standpoint of making sure that no false doctrine is coming in. I do understand that. But and when we think about the church and you know what what it looks like. It is, that is a sad commentary that sometimes it's defined by its preacher, but then, you know, take it a step further. Sometimes it's known by its bad members. Also people, you know, I, I, I would hate to be a part, be a person 
who has done so much wrong or done lives in a way that's contrary to Christ, where people say, I won't go to that church if so and so goes there. That's 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 a tough one. That's a tough one for me. Yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 hopefully and prayerfully that would not be the situation of their current life. Cause if that is, that is a terrible situation. But I can imagine there was probably some folks like, you know, Saul Tarsus go there. Yeah, yep, yes. He's at Antioch. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going down there. Yeah. You know, so so um, but but you know, and and when I say social club, man, you know, it's it's ch- the Lord's church and assembling with the church and being a member of the body, man. You know, again, we have I think we have t- talked about this ad nauseum. We have made reference to, you know, you and I think we we have done such because we're because we we want to caution and warn against a certain mentality and disposition that has you know, uh, that has permeated the church, that has um, pervaded the church, this idea that because we don't have persecution, because we are comfortable, because we are protected by rights, because we do have wealth and we do have convenience, because we have those things, the church is often treated like a social club or like, you know, God, what can you do for me? I have money. I have my health. I have a job. I have a nice house. I have a car. I'm able to take family vacations. Like I'm not poor and I'm not starving and I'm not oppressed oppressed by my government. You know, I don't have those earthly persecutions. So what God, what can you do for me? God, really, God, you should be thankful that I'm a member of the church. Or you should be thankful for what I can do for the church. So sometimes we see the church as a social club or family entertainment. Again, families when they're looking for churches they're looking like they're looking for schools you know family visit churches like they visit schools what is this church going to offer my children how is it going to entertain my children how is it going to keep my children you know out of uh uh adverse situations in life how how is the how is the church going to prepare my child to deal with the moment they're 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 faced with being offered a vape or drugs how's the church going to you know what are they going to do for my family how are they going to entertain my family? Can I network? You know, can I network through the church? Is it, is it a, is it a rich congregation? Is it a thriving congregation? Are there business owners there? Are there doctors? Are there lawyers? Are there attorneys? Y'all have an app? Yeah. Do y'all have an app? Yeah. Who said, like, you know, who said like Avon? <laughs> right. Y'all, y'all, y'all have an app. Y'all have a website. Y'all have a YouTube channel. Y'all have a Facebook uh-huh. page. You know, they treat the church like a focus group. Yeah. You know, we just come and we just kind of, this is the place where I air out my grievances and I, you know, I get, you know, I get worldly, not worldly, but like, like advice as far as like self motivation and, and self help. Or some people treat the church like a nonprofit benevolence organization. Like we, we're supposed to cure all of poverty. We're supposed to cure famine. The church is supposed to, but Jesus didn't even do that. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he didn't even cure. He said, the, the poor you have with you always. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like Jesus didn't even cure that. He said, Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. He didn't say come forth. Well, somebody said everybody would have got out the grave. <laughs> everybody who had ever died would have got up if Jesus judged. He didn't come to get rid of those things. But yet people expect the church to. Right. They expect the church to get rid of poverty. They expect the church to get rid of, you know, <clears throat> um, you know, you know, the sickness or whatever the case may be, or hard times. And in so doing. You know what people end up doing by that very thing, like you said, it's, it's crazy to actually see that in 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 reality. Yeah, and people end up making the church be something that God never intended for it to be. Right, and then when you actually try to get people back to basic New Testament Christianity, they act like you preaching false doctrine. Yeah, it's it's it it is. I'm telling you, man. It's a, have y'all seen that meme? Have y'all seen that meme that is has been circulating Facebook among ch- uh, preachers? And it's and it's got these various frames in the meme of pictures, and it's like what I think I do versus yes, what you know versus. what my mom thinks I do, right. what my friends okay. think I do, what my you know well, yeah, well, then, what, what I actually do, what and what I actually do, okay. and the one where it says what I actually do, you got this man standing up, he's saying something, but it's like three people present, they all three of them sleep. <laughs> 
you know, it's, it's, it's difficult man. to change minds, man. You know, that's what I always say that about the Sermon on the Mount. I call it a deprogramming, reprogramming sermon because in that sermon, Jesus has to deprogram the Jews to get their minds ready for the kingdom. Right. You know, yeah. and so, and that's why we see passages in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapters five through seven, right. where Jesus said, you heard it said, but, but I say unto you, like things were changing and the Jews needed to, they need to let go in order to <clears throat> receive, but man, trying to change people's minds, man, it's, it's tough. But even, even, you know, amongst, you know, uh, members of the church, you know, people have these little sly remarks, these little, you know, running jokes, you know, preachers only work an hour out the week. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, you know, yeah, it, it doesn't bother me. But, you know, I, what I want you to understand by that, though, you know, a lot of the things that that we see in life that 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 you may you may see as, oh, man, that's that's not that big of a deal. Um, man, that stuff it's 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 not what you see mm -hmm. because most of the work is done right. in the background. And so it's just like, man, anything else in life, man, you know, I never, I never, uh, you know, talk down about somebody's job or profession, man, because I don't know what they do. Right. You know, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what happens when, when I don't, I'm not seeing them. So people need to realize, man, preachers and, and leaders of churches, man, you know, they do a whole lot of stuff that you never, ever see. Right. And that you would never, ever be able to comprehend. And so, you know, people, like you said, they just need to be, um, be, uh, Reprogram into thinking differently about the church, so. right? That I mean, it's, it be, they have to see the church in a different light, in a different frame that has been structured by the comfort and convenience and wealth that we have, especially in this country. Right. You know, and it's um, that's a hard thing to do, man. It, like wealth and wealth and convenience and con that's why, man, it's it's it's, it's hard. So I hear, for I hear, a rich man to get into heaven. <laughs> I, I hear you saying we're not ready for real persecution. Oh, certainly not. We saw that. Yes, we seen that. We saw that just a few years ago. Yeah. We're not ready for real persecution. Right? If Christianity was made punishable by death yesterday, yeah. like how many people show up for Bible study on Wednesday? You, you, right? talk, you, 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 you talk about, you know, memes. You remember we talked about that meme with the, the two lions? Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, people talk about that. You know, they they got the faith strong as a lion, and then the other lion is the lion from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <Right. laughs> is that that lion? But but yeah, it's it's um it's there there is a reprogramming. I think you know for for what the work of the church is, and and let, let's let's dive on in the the text that will drive this episode. I think Ephesians chapter four, verse eleven twelve. Mm -hmm. I, you know. I think Paul clearly just simply laid out the structure of the work of the church. God gave these various offices, Ephesians chapter four, verse 11. He gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for a reason. Yeah. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's the work of the church. Like we could, we could say, amen. We could extend the invitation. We could end this episode. Right. You know, but what does that look like, though? You know, what does that look like? You know, what, what does what does it look like? And, and when you talk about perfecting the saints, like what are, what are we talking about when we talk about perfecting the saints? Like the work of the church is perfecting the saints. What does it look like? Like what are we talking about? Well, before you mention that, I think it's interesting in verse number eleven, and it's, it's word that that people sometimes seldomly overlook. He gave some, some, some. So, I mean, it's said repeatedly. The reason why I bear that out is because I think what members need to understand is that not everybody can be in a leadership uh, or we might even say upfront type of role. Right. You know, because people think, you know, what? oh, well, you know what? He's a good businessman. Um, you know, he got a lot of money. Whatever the case may be, they think, you know what? That automatically qualifies him to be a leader up in front of God's people. No, Paul said he gave some. Yeah. Not all. Right. You know, and and some well-intentioned sister will say, well, you know what? I believe such and such and such. He ought to be an elder. He here every Sunday. Mm, that ain't the qualification. That's not the qualification. Just because, just because he's a man and he's only been married once and he can make children, that doesn't mean he can be an elder. Just because he meets those three things. No. 
No, but they think, oh, he here every Sunday. He can make kids, and he's never been divorced. You know, and and so he can be an elder. And that's why I bear that out about Paul said, and God gave some, some, some for different offices. And right. and and think about it, that doesn't make you any less of a person, mm -hmm. of a member of the body, because Paul was saying First Corinthians twelve, you know that every member is important to the body. Right. But that doesn't make you any less important. That doesn't make you any less of a Christian just because you're not a leader in some capacity. You don't have to be an elder to go to heaven. Right. You don't have to be a deacon to go to heaven. You don't have to be a preacher to go to heaven. Right. You're right about that. And you think I, I look at it also keeping in context verse number eleven when we read and we study and we see about the book of Ephesians, we realize that prophets. And I, I, just out of this list, I'll just say pro prophets, you know, unless this word is trans translated as messengers, mm -hmm. you know, there's no quote unquote prophets. You know, people try to nitpick those things mm -hmm. and say, well, hey, well, I'm going to be a prophet, you know, because the prophets, you know, that's a great honor. I want to be a prophet. Sure. It's always funny how when people talk about prophets, they talk about the good stuff, mm -hmm. but, but they don't never go yeah. to the. Jeremiah. Most Stug of them were killed, weren't right. they? Yeah, mo yeah, most of them have had have been in some very hot situations. But I want to always keep that in context also because people will pick those things out, pastors and pastors and prophets, and they'll lean on those things. And they and they make verse eleven, they make these things instead of officers, they make them titles. titles. That you have to that you cut you have to call them. Right. Apostle it, so and so. Well, it, well, you know, obviously it's obviously he's talking in the age of the miraculous. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, because you have apostles. So that that tells you that it's the age of miraculous. Um, but even within the age of miraculous, you can have offices that extend out yep. past the age of the miraculous because you'd have to in order to have the church by yeah. succession of perpetuation. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you'd have to. Right. And so, 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 and some prophets. So prophets right. will be that miraculous ability. But then evangelists, right? That's 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 a preacher. Um, pastors, those are elders. elders. And teachers, those could be Bible class teachers, though, and and they might even have been inspired, right? You know, even they may have been, have been inspired. I think if we point back to James three one, beloved, be not many masters. That word translates teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Like, be careful about what you say you want to do. Well, you mentioned earlier uh, Hebrews five for yeah. for yeah. for when for the time you ought to be teachers, teachers, right? You know, yeah, um, yeah, me one teach you again, right? So, but then going back to the to the original question for the perfecting of the saints, Paul is going to begin here in verse number twelve down throughout verse fifteen to talk about a growth, development, maturation process mm -hmm. uh, of the saints, right? And that's what the word that's really what the word perfecting means is it's right. the idea of maturing, being complete, growth, development. Because in verse fifteen he will say, um, "But speaking the truth in love may grow." Mm -hmm. up into him right. so so the saints got to grow and that growth is facilitated by the offices in verse number 11 for sure because right. because when because if you follow if we follow the text then you're going to perfect the saints for i mean there, there's the, yes. the word for is immediately after yes. for the perfect for the perfecting of the saints because he gave the offices for, for right for for like, there's a purpose to this. Like, like there's, a, where there's a progression that we're moving from here right. to here. But I'm down when those fall in it. Yeah, <laughs> they, 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 I'm telling you. I, I mean, he. I mean, it's beautiful. Right. I mean, you know, it's 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 lovely, man. When when we study the study the scripture, man. You know, and it goes back to the model, like you say. If you're going to keep the church going, you're going to be teaching. It's not about going and laying on hands today. It's not about calling yourself an apostle. You teach. You teach, uh -huh. you teach. Yeah. You keep what what they say, teach one, reach one, or reach one, teach one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you continue like you continue to just keep that 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 going. And when you talk about the work of the church, and again, it's important to realize that it takes a village. It's like we are a community. You go back and you study Israel of old and see how Israel of old was under God. They were inclusive of them, like they focused on themselves. They had to do the work. Well, but well, think about think about the New Testament structure though, because I know I know you always you know fond of bringing out the dates of the books and stuff. Mm -hmm. So Ephesians would have would have been written around about what time? Um, Ephesians would have been in the sixties. Let me okay. let me think. So 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 you date yeah sixty well, roughly sixty two. So you date Ephesians, and then you put Timothy at the church because he would have wrote he would have wrote <clears throat> Ephesians from Corinth. So that would have been about 62. And then Ephesians would have been one of those prison epistles. But yeah. my point my point in bearing that idea, so we're talking about perpetuating mm -hmm. in the work of the church. You get the first Timothy 1 3, 
Paul tells Timothy, mm -hmm. as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus sure. when I went into Macedonia. Yeah. So what is Timothy doing? Right. From this congregation that started from Acts 19 to the book of Ephesians yeah. to, to, to Timothy's work, mm -hmm. it's growing, it's right. working, it's being perpetuated. Right. Why? Because you got you got you got Timothy down there, mm -hmm. you got some elders down there. Yeah. Uh, we know they had elders because of Acts chapter 20. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we, we we have to recognize that there is a work of the church to keep the church growing right. and thriving. And like you said, in my mind, I was thinking about another book, but Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon were written 62 to 63, mm -hmm. Acts 28, um, from Rome. Um, but um, Corinthians was written from from Ephesus, 1 Corinthians. So so that, that work has to per be perpetuated, right. if, especially for the gospel. To, to go out and tell the world, we, we did an episode about evangelism and how the gospel is to go out into all the world and how the responsibility of not only, you know, the individual, because the individual has a responsibility into it, but the individuals make the church. Yeah. And so the work of the church is the perfecting of the saints. Um, katartismos in the Greek, and that's, um, it means equipping, preparing. Like, so, so the work of the church is preparing the saints. Well, who are the saints? Those who have been the sanctified. sanctified. Right. The sanctified. Exactly. Those who have been set apart for service to God. Romans 15, 25. Right. You know, Paul taught, you know, he, 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 he wrote to the saints. The saints are those who have been, as a matter of fact, Paul would say, um, but now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. You know, that's, Paul was headed to 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 serve the saints, right. and the saints are those who have been sanctified, those who have been called out of the world by the gospel call. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse fourteen, who have been obedient to the gospel, uh, Romans chapter one verse sixteen seventeen. But they are called the saints because Paul wrote to the saints at Rome, right. and they were saints not of a latter day. <laughs> they were saints because I'm a saint today. Right. I'm not a saint of a latter day. I'm a saint today. And those who are faithfully obedient to the will of God are the saints. So if we're talking about perfecting the saints, so if we're talking about equip, because this is the work of the church, like this is what the church, I think this would do well for elders. Like, I think this would do well for elders, man, to, to, and not, not saying that they don't, I'm not, I'm certainly not, um, certainly not cast stone elders. I, I'm just saying that this should be a consistent appeal within the eldership to make sure that the church is in fact doing the work of the church. church. I, I I don't think they can revisit that enough. Right. You know, I don't think I don't think they can ever be like, okay, we got it. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, you got it, but. You need to revisit it, right? What, 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 did, what did Peter say? I stir, stir up, up your up pure mind by, by way of remembrance. remembrance. Like, like y'all need to, you need to continuously revisit, hey, like every, every, everything that happens within that body should be to the extent of the work of the church. Especially Is you, it a work of the church? Especially if, if it is true that just about every 10 years we raise up a new generation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I believe it was, was it not one year, Guy Woods. Mm -hmm. Guy Woods said, you know, just about every 10 years we bring, we, we rip a new generation. So you figure, you know, if you've had an uh, eldership in place for 20, 30 years, man, that's, that's three generations of, of, of Christians. Right. And, and you imagine the younger the generations are, the more they need to be taught right. so they can be prepared for the work of the ministry. Right. You know, and, and and they need to do that. And the saints are, you know, the work of the church is to prepare, to equip the saints for something that's coming next. But the, all these offices that we see in chapter of, excuse me, verse 11, were for the perfecting of the saints. Right. And so what, what does that, what does that, how are the saints perfected? How, how is the church supposed to perfect the saints? You know, by equipping them, having them ready to do the things that are needful, you know, because, again, we know that everybody, like you said, everybody's not going to be in, a, in an office, but that's one of those things where you get those who are desirous, those who show that who who have the ability 
and who have more of the desire and to be able to stand firm on what they're going to do. Because again, are there, are there some people who just are comfortable coming to worship and just being there? Mm-hmm. Yes. We know if you have a large congregation, you got a 500 member con- or just a hundred member congregation. Everybody can't teach every Sunday. You know, that's one of the things I love about where I am now. There's a rotation of men. So even if it's the person who's in charge of doing announcements from the person, the song leaders, from even the rotation of the Bible class teachers and and preaching, every, there, there's 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 room for growth for everybody. So it doesn't fall on one person. The thing that happens and I'm, I'm going to go for, for one moment. Oh, I'm, I'm going to say I think about this when I see congregations that are looking to bring in a man to to be at a congregation. And I look at the qualifications and I and I think about your question, what you're just asking of how the church uh, is perfecting the saints for the work. You know, somebody will come in and say, hey, you need a, a we want a man who got a Bible degree or five or you've been experienced for five years, this and that. And you list all these things. And then I'm looking and I have to ask the question. A lot of times when they bring somebody in who have all these requirements and you want a master's degree and this and that, what you do, you alienate a lot of people who say, well, I can't do that. So I'm not going to. I'm not I don't have that degree, so I'm not going to try to do this. Right. Like, again, we we began to make the church to be kind of a social club and kind of be, you know, and again, it may, I, I may be wrong, but I do see some requirements just, from, from some churches. That, I was just thinking when you said and I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'll let you get back to it. But man, so, so the apostles wouldn't even be able to apply in some of these places. I mean, that, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, that's the crazy thing about it. But we we have gotten to that point. But then it's like me and Brother White were talking one day. And he said, it's crazy that elders want to bring you in and you're more qualified than they are. And then they they don't know anything and they didn't want to tell you what to do. Right. I said, man, that's. But going back to your original question, it is it, it needs to be a thing where hopefully it becomes contagious while we while one is learning and others may inquire. But OK, how are you teaching that? Or can you bring somebody in? Can you bring somebody do you have somebody to pass the baton to? Right. Are we are we creating a generation that's going to come behind us and be willing to do the same thing? I'm gonna be honest with you. Right now, it looks like it looks very grim. Yeah, it looks very grim. Like now, I'm not condemning all teenagers in the church or young adults, but they're like for the majority of the, of the generation, it is looking pretty grim because many people are not attending services and are not finding or putting Christ first, even though they have quote unquote. Obey the gospel. I won't say truly converted. I'll say they obey the gospel. Mm-hmm. But a true sign of conversion is if you are perfect, being perfected by the works, and if you are truly growing. Well, I tell you, man, it, and you say, and you say that, and, that, and it can be a grim outlook, man. And and but I, I tell you, what is always so encouraging to me every year is PTP. When I see these young men at PTP who are aspiring to be preachers, and I see these young men walking around in suits, man, and they. They, they are carrying their Bibles and they're headed. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about late teens, early twenties. Yeah. I'm talking about, you know, kids that could be my children. You know, that's crazy to say. <laughs> I have a 21 year old daughter. She'll be 22 this year. But I see, I see kids walking around at PTP in their suits with their Bibles and they're headed to various classes and they're, they're aspiring to be preachers. Man, and my heart swells, man. Cause I'm, I'm like, you know what? Cause sometimes, I can, you know, I I can get in a rut like, man, the churches, you start looking at social media and you're looking at these churches who, who are doing all this crazy stuff, cannot find biblical authority for it. And they're all they are in the business of doing is entertaining and trying to swell the congregation instead of grow it spiritually. And, And you just think, man, you just think, man, man, this is. This is, but then you go to PTV and you see these young men want to be preachers, man. I tell you, it's a great thing. Or go to last the leaders and right. you see all of these young people mm-hmm. who are on fire, who are on fire, right. man, and then doing good things. And so, you know, I think about, <clears throat> so like, if you were to take an example, like, you know, this the United States government, you know, they don't just thrust you out to war. You yeah. know, we're talking about equipping the saints. You first got to take the ass valve. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to pass a physical. Mm-hmm. And then before they actually put you into the military, man, you got to go through basic training. training. And you know, all those things, you know what I'm saying, precede you actually being a representation of the United States government out on the battlefield. And so the government understands, hey, this person has to be trained. They have to be equipped. We can't mm-hmm. just put them out there ill-equipped. Right. Man, you go out there ill-equipped, man, you know what? 
he gonna get killed. Some other people may get killed. You mm-hmm. was about to fall. And guess what? That's gonna be on yeah. our watch. And so the same thing with, with Christianity, man. The saints, you, you're talking about people being called out of darkness. You mentioned second, that's only 214. Mm-hmm. Coming out of a world of denominationalism, world religions, confusion, sin, whatever the case may be, they're mm-hmm. coming out of that world, coming into the kingdom of light. Man, this is an entirely new life, new way of living, new, sure. new creature, right. new situation, new covenant that they don't know anything about. They got to be taught this or they got to be equipped in this so that they can go out and represent it to the best of their ability. And so what, what elders and what these officers do in verse 11 is help the saints realize uh, their full potential help them to, to realize it, but also to maximize it so they can honor and glorify God. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, and, and that's a, that's a great, let me write this. <laughs> so when I preach a sermon, I'll give Cameron credit for the first time. <laughs> uh, yeah, the first second, time. second time I'll say some preacher. Man, right. The third time is mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so uh, you've done your due diligence. I've done, I've done, you've done, your I've done my due diligence. Like, hopefully, yeah. they, hopefully they'll see that first time I reference it and say, oh, Cameron, Cameron Freeman, you know. It's like you write that paperwork. You got you to get credit, man. You got a site. You got a site, man. <laughs> second, I, time I, is general, second time is basic knowledge. This is some preacher. <laughs> I remember, I heard some preacher say, and the third time is is mine, um, but 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 perfecting the saints. So so one way we perfect the saints is through Bible study. Amen. Right. And Acts two forty two. They were steadfast in the apostles' doc. They weren't steadfast in just foolishness. They were steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. It didn't even it didn't even say they were steadfast in doctrine. No, it didn't even say doctrine because that that could that could happen. It didn't even say the word of God and I. And listen, hear me when I say this. Implied is the word of God. Right. But they were steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. This is how we equip the saints. Man, when the saints gather, the the leadership of that congregation must, and I dare say must, make sure that what is being taught is the apostles' doctrine like that's how you equip the saints as you you know the great illustration you just use about being good soldiers of christ right. what paul told timothy like no man that wore than tangling himself with the fairs like mm-hmm. well you on the battlefield you're not thinking is my mortgage paid it was my mortgage paid this month you got bullets flying at you you know you're not thinking about your mortgage being paid no right? you're not entangled with the affairs of this life and so when we when we're putting when we're helping people understand the word of god we're like listen like this is what the this is the this is God's word, and this when you apply this, right? You go out there in this battlefield, you have to be about the right. truth. And you know what? So so, and you think about. It, I think we've alluded to this as well. So so, when you come to Bible study, mm-hmm. that's what you're coming to. Yeah, you're coming to a time that's been designated for us to sit down, right? Study God's word, ask questions, probing questions, um, be encouraged. This is not. This is not. Um, you you come and 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 teach the class from your seat. <laughs> this is this is not. You know we we finna have. Uh, uh, you know we just gonna talk about all of world cultural events. Right. This is man. This is we coming to study the word of God. We coming to study yeah. now. Now now that study will incorporate maybe some some Socratic method of instruction, yeah. which is. I ask a question, mm-hmm. right? And and looking for you to answer, and but I'm asking response, a question right? not because I need to know the answer, <laughs> but because but because I'm trying to probe deeper into your thinking it's and to good. challenge you, right? Right? To think critically and to think deeply. And, and again, Socratic method um, of instruction is something we use as educators. I just said that sounds. I was gonna say that sounds like the edu- uh, that sounds like the educator of you coming out right there. I was, I was gonna say I was Epicurean just, and Stoics, you know, uh, I'm, Socrates. I'm, I'm of the. I'm of that ilk, but, uh, but you know, it, it, but, 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 but so Bible study can be, you know, um, um, it can involve this kind of back and forth, right? Right. Okay. Because people do learn when you ask them questions rather than just telling them something. Like when you let, it's called productive struggle. Like when you, when you let somebody struggle productively, like I'm telling you, man, you can, you can tell people the answer all day long. They'll never learn it. But if you let them productively struggle and when they get it on their own, and I've seen this in my you know, 15 year 
you know, career and education. When, whenever I was teaching my students and I would, and I would, and I taught math and I wouldn't give them the answer. And they, when they came to that conclusion on their own, you could not take that from them. They would never forget it. Yeah. But if I just was like, if they called me over, you know, uh, Coach Garner, I need help on this. And I go over like, oh yeah, here's the answer. It's like, it's like, you know, spoon feeding versus making somebody go out and, and right. work and, and get it for themselves. Right, so, right. But you know, I, I just want to add this point to it. You know, we, we talk about the work of the church. And one thing we've always said for years, you know, ever since I think, since we met, we've known each other. Mm -hmm. If you want to see the work of the church, yeah. the congregation that you should look at in scripture, mm -hmm. Acts 11. Absolutely. Acts 13. Yes, sir. Antioch of Syria. Mm -hmm. Man. And Acts 11, yes. you know, it's interesting because you, you got Barnabas mm -hmm. going back to Tarsus. Right, to find Saul. To find Saul. Once he brings them back, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like one of the most beautiful things you ever see, man. They assemble with the church for a whole year. A whole year. Teach many people. Right. The disciples are called Christians. But when you get to Acts chapter 13, oh man, uh, uh, Barnabas, uh, uh, Paul, Agabus. And, and Agabus and other people, they're teaching, mm -hmm. they're evangelistic, right. they're sending aid to, to, to other to, poor, to saints. poor saints. Man, that, that church. Man, man they, they were rivaling Jerusalem. Man, can you imagine? And I know we're on a tangent. But can you imagine Acts 15? Can you, can you imagine those Judaizing teachers? Who said they were from Jerusalem, but the but the apostles said we we we, didn't didn't, we had no such teaching. No. Like they did. I mean, they from us, but they didn't come from yeah, us. We didn't send them down there. We didn't send them down there with yeah. that message. They go down there saying that the Gentiles, they go to Antioch saying the Gentiles need Paul said <laughs> Paul said they, were, they they met them jokers at the door. Paul said, oh. You will not teach this doctrine here. Can you imagine the elders at Antioch telling Paul, hey man, just just kind of go up to Jerusalem and meet with them and just, just smooth this thing. I can imagine Paul, no, why do I have to go? Like, I'm an apostle too. Like, I mean, you know, we, they, the Antioch rivaled man. Jerusalem, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, the word of God was doing But I, I just, I just think about that Antioch. congregation in, in, in the work. Yeah. Because of those, those, those four chapters, five chapters, Acts 11 through Acts 15 is, mm -hmm. man, that church is really kind of the thrust of those uh, five chapters oh, for sure. because of the work. Uh, but when you even think about the work, mm -hmm. they sent out yeah. missionaries. Yeah. Like they evangelized the whole world, man, from Antioch. Yep. You know, and, and I mean, in Galatians 6, 6, um, Paul said, let him that is taught in the word communicate to him that teacheth in all good things. And I know the word communicate there is, is as a matter of fact, it's the Greek word koinonia. It is the word for, and, is, and this in this instance is financial. Yeah. All right. We're, we're not talking about that. However, what we are talking about is let him that is taught in the word. Yeah. So somebody has been taught. Some saint has been perfected. Mm -hmm. Right. Some saint has been perfected. I think we made reference to it in an earlier episode, 2 Timothy 2 2. I think you brought up key, you know. And the things which thou hast heard of me among men and witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Sound Bible study is paramount for the perfecting of the saints because the saints have to take this perfecting and then do something so with the perfecting. Right. You, you know, know, when it comes to saints have to be willing to dig also and not just accept the things they've been told, they gotta be. We gotta be like the noble Bereans. Berean test. I call it the Berean test. There are so many. I remember. Maybe I wasn't the first one to come up with that, but that's I what I call it. I remember. I brought up. So I had to be at Auburn Hills probably two years at the time, and I started teaching about premillennialism because there was some questions that there was some questions that were being asked, and one of the sisters who had ended up leaving that same year, she said. That's too crazy. I don't understand it. I, I can't understand what you're saying. And I said, well, that's why we're here. So <laughs> if you don't understand something, let's break it down. And she and she just got mad. Basically, it was like I was teaching false doctrine is in her mind. I can't see it. I, I was, can't see it here. I can't say it. Go ahead, Key. You know, <laughs> that she it was it was it was crazy because I'm I'm going over these topics and I'm like, yeah, I like I, and I literally I broke it down. I, I'm talking about called myself. I had it all printed out. Had everything you needed, what you need to know about it. We and verses to go with it. You know, you know how we did the pre the premium. Right, 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 right. So I kind of, I kind of broke my stuff down like that and gave the whole class a handout for each one of the topics. Wow, I'm talking. Did, did a great job, in my opinion. I did, did, I don't know why we studying this. This ain't about Jesus. 
Well, and about Jesus, you know, the people who teach this doctrine say that Jesus is going to come back and establish a, a kingdom. And he's going to reign on earth for what, a thousand, a thousand years? years and you're going to have a seven year tribulation or three and a half, whatever, whatever it is. And all these things. And so sometimes things got to get out of their own way. Yeah. Because, well, you know, some, sometimes things are just not ready for those meteor you know, sometimes they're right. just not ready for those yeah. meteor things. But you know, just, if, unfortunately, if, yeah, if you for, if you forty year, thirty forty years into the into the lowest church, and you're still on milk, that's a problem. You know, I, I what I probably would have done is I probably would have done a more of a like college level or like an upper level uh, first principles course. You know what I'm saying? Because they they clear because somebody asked a preacher. I don't. I'm not gonna say any names, or Cameron might get mad at me. <laughs> but, but somebody asked a preacher why they had to attend Bible study, and the preacher said, "Because you ask questions like that. <laughs> that's that's yeah. that's why you. That's why we have Bible study because you you ask that very question, and 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 that's how the saints are perfected, man. The saints are perfected through Bible study, and that happens in several ways, man. That happens in the classes, which are. I love Bible study time, Man. but it also happens in the sermon. It happens in gospel meetings. It happens in lectureships. It happens anywhere that saints can engage true and sound doctrine, right? And the congregation, that's a work. Like right. the congregation has to be involved in that. Man, like I, hand, hand to plow. I remember hearing, uh, you know, everybody who's heard me know my conversion story. You know, I was converted in Montgomery on the brother, brother Eric Thorne. And uh, shout out to Brother Thorne, sound gospel preacher. Man, Brother Thorne gave an analogy one time, man. It was spot on. And he was he was comparing like sound gospel preaching to eating. And, and Thorne said, man, if you won't come and get a free meal, I know you ain't eating at home. <laughs> That's true. So, I mean, think about how true yeah. that is, though, man. Like, yeah. Man, if you won't come get a meal, and, and this meal is a free Bible, a free Bible study, that lesson has already been prepared, it's been rightly divided. All you gotta do is come and eat. Man, you know you ain't studying at home. You know you're not <laughs> cooking and getting flour all on your face Man, and dirty you enough dishes. No, and you ain't. You're not doing all that. No, you're not doing all that. No. Well, that. Well, the second way we perfect the saints, another way that the saints are perf perfected is through worship. And I, and I just made reference to that through the sermon, but mm -hmm. the saints are perfected through that. They're equipped through that. Um, we, when we were discussing evangelism, we made reference to, no, I think it was an episode on um, true worship. Um, that's what it was. It was an episode on true worship. And we were discussing um, Acts chapter 17 when Paul went to um, Athens and he was uh, dealing with those Epicureans and Stoics. And by the way, Paul used uh, apologetics. He used Christian evidences to, um, sure to, to teach, to teach that, that that's a great lesson in that. Um, I think I heard, I think I heard Ky uh, Hiram Kemp do a, a lesson at PTP a couple, a few years ago, man, it was a, he did an amazing job on teaching the gospel to like the atheistic group and those who you can't, you can't use a, man, he did a, he did a great job. But in Acts 17, 23, um, Paul said that he had passed by and beheld their devotions. Um, and they had, and he saw this, this altar with his unknown, um, inscription. With unknown inscription, uh, but he's, he passed by and saw an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. He said, whom you therefore ignorantly worship him declare unto you. But he didn't attack the idea of worship. He attacked that it was ignorant. He's like, let me show you how to truly, like, let me show you who he is that you ignorantly worship. You don't know, you don't know him. So you just set up an altar that said to the unknown, this one, I'm going to show him to you. The saints, when the saints gather and assemble for worship, they are being perfected because when we meet, when we gather and assemble, man, we, we take care of those one to another passages mm -hmm. or one for another passages yeah. or yep. one another passages. And I, and I challenge, you know, I've challenged the church at Udawa with this, like go throughout the new Testament, use a Bible, you know, use a Bible app, use, you know, use any, any kind of concordance, whatever, yeah. whatever you use, search the phrases or one of their derivatives one to another, one, another one for another and see, see what you see, what you come up with. Right. See how many passages that you're supposed to do something to someone else Absolutely. or for someone else, exhorting one another, admonishing one another, loving one another, serving one another, praying for one another. Like, and we can go on and on and on. How do you do this? Like, 
Like, what's happening when that occurs is perfecting. Yeah. yeah. Like the saints are being perfected. They're being prepared. They're being, you know, equipped. Um, and then serving. Galatians 5.13, um, you know, Paul, Paul said there that we need to serve one another and make sure that we do it um, in love. Uh, uh, Paul said, for brethren, you have been called you know, unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve so one another, right. right? And so when we serve one another, that's one of those one another passages. When we serve one another, you know, when I serve you, when I serve you, like not only are you guys being perfected, but I'm being perfected too. Acts 20, 35 is more blessed to give than, than to receive. receive. Now, of course, we know that Paul was talking, you know, in the context of taking care of the poor, which, you know, I don't know if that, I don't know if, and Cameron, you can correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm maybe off a little bit. That may have stemmed from, because Paul always made reference to, you know, when the apostle extended him the right hand of fellowship, sending him to the Gentiles, only that he would remember the poor. I think in Galatians, maybe chapter two. That, I think um, he says something. That which he was eager to do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I think that may have stemmed from Acts 15. I could be wrong. But even, even in the count in the in even the, in um Acts 11. You remember even okay. in, even in Acts 11. Yeah. Um, you know, that was one of the things him and Barnabas did, I think right. in Acts eleven thirty. Yeah. Um, because the brother was determined to send relief. Right. Uh, to I think to Judea. Well, well, but I, well, what I'm saying is that when he had met the apostles. He said they they commissioned him with remembering the poor. Oh, okay, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that he yeah, remembered yeah, the poor yeah. um, as he went to the Gentiles. But, but anyway, but like you're um, saying though, but yeah. that's just one of those things. That was one of the many things that came out of the church of Antioch, right? You know, just right. I mean, you think about man, they was hitting all hitting all, <laughs> all cylinders, all, all yeah. cylinders, man. They were, they, yeah, Antioch oh. was man. That was <laughs> when I taught the Book of Acts when we when we taught in our contextual studies class. When we talked about Antioch, man, them four chapters. I said it several times, Antioch in a good way, not in a not in a um, competition way. Right. Man, they yeah. rival Jerusalem. Man, you know Jerusalem was seen as the mother yeah, church. Yeah, that was right. You know, Jerusalem was seen as the mother church. Man, Antioch was Antioch was rival. They had apostles, they had elders, they had prophets, teachers, <laughs> <so> teachers. They, <laughs> they, oh man. You know, you think about they know, were meeting Ephesians 4 11, weren't they? Going back to your about serving. Ser servitude is something that takes humility and it also takes the opportunity. It's an attitude about it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't want to serve today, but, but, but mm -hmm. would rather be served. It's a, it's a mindset that has to be taught out of, out of Christianity, or, especially because it, like, like you said, you know, it's, it's more, it's more blessed to, to give than to receive. And again, we know the context of that, but sticking with it from a service standpoint, I, I love to be able to help out. And, you know, there may come a time where I may need some help. And, man, mm -hmm. I know what? It, I've never been short of it. If there's anything that I need, that's how we should be in the church. It, guess what? Today it might be Cameron. Tomorrow it might be Key. Next day it might be Eric. You know, but we we really have to develop the the mentality to serve. Now, I didn't I didn't see the commercial. I know everybody was talking about the commercial, um, the Super Bowl commercial about uh, about Jesus washing everybody's feet. I, it's been a big controversy on Facebook. I don't even know what the, what the commercial is about. Yeah, but I do know when it comes to the whole thing about Jesus washing washing the those who were with him feet, the the servitude that he showed them that hey, I'm you're I'm great, but I can still do this. You're right. you know we look out for one another. It is sometimes people don't want to serve others because of what they've done in their past or feel like they don't deserve it. But man, if that's the attitude I have, man, I need to check myself and see where I stand. Yeah. I mean, but think about like, if we're talking about the work of the church, even with the, the offices in verse 11 and any other aspect of the work of the church, I mean, what's implied is, is, is service, you know, because for example, a man has to desire the office of an elder, first Timothy three, one, mm -hmm. like, man, to a large degree, he's even though he's an elder and he, you know, they're ruling Hebrews 13, 7, 17, 24, they're still serving. Oh, for sure. Deacons are serving. Mm -hmm. Another preachers. word for preachers are serving. Servants. Paul told Timothy, you know, 2 Timothy 2, 24, mm -hmm. by being a servant. Yes. You know, the, the servant must not strive. Yeah. So, so it's the idea that, you know what, in in a, in a practical working environment, we're all serving one another. But like you said, Galatians 5 13. And the motivating factor behind that is, is love. Motivating factor is love. Right. 
anything outside of love, it, it doesn't accomplish anything. Yeah. And, and the, perfecting the saints is like paramount to the very next one in the progression, which is working the ministry mm-hmm. because that's the work of the church is to work the ministry. And, and man, and here's where I caution and kind of going back to that disposition you talk about, Key, we got to get that mindset out of the church. And I don't know, I don't know how to do it, you know, without a, without a persecution, but you, because you, you hate to see it and you hate to say it, but I think we all know what would happen if, if a persecution would come, just the numbers of the church would just go down. Oh yeah. Drastic. You know, in, in, the, in the first century, the church grew in persecution. Right. We, I think, on the other hand, the church, again, if the church, if, if Christianity was made punishable by death yesterday, the church numbers would decrease dramatically. And again, we saw a type of persecution that proved that to us over the past few years. Yeah. We saw a persecution that proved to us that people would not go to the death of the stake and being burned alive for Christ Jesus. Like, I mean, we can sing the song all, uh, we can sing the songs all we want to. We can sing the lies as well as we can tell one. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you talk about the work of the ministry, like the ministry is, you know, the service of the church, the serving of the church, the, the, the getting out the work of the church. I always said it like this. We perfect the saints, you know, through study, through worship, through serving, so that the saints can go out and work the ministry. That is get out into the world, evangelize. That's what I see. You know, it's evangelism. And then the edification of the body is the body being built up. We'll, we'll deal with that in just a few moments here. But when the, when the saints are perfected and the ministry is worked, the conclusion should be the building up of the body. Churches have a million ministries. And key in the same vein that we got to get this, 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 this disposition out of the church, man. And I don't know how to do it, um, how to change people's minds about what the church is and what the work of the church is supposed to be. But man, churches have to be careful, man. We got all these ministries, man. We minor in the majors and major in the minors, man. We'll have all these little works and ministries and projects and all this stuff going on. And just like, uh, uh, guys, you know, yeah, can we get back to the mission? Can we, can we get back to making the main thing the main thing? Yeah, because there, there is a difference between activities, mm-hmm. events, mm-hmm. and ministries. Yeah. Because some people like busy work. Sometimes we just get, the, the reason is, it's busy work. Yeah. If I could say, hey, I did this in the name of Jesus, guess what? That makes me feel good. Now, mm-hmm. I, now I feel good, but I'm just doing busy work that's not really account for anything. Mm-hmm. That's why you have so many. And again, I'm not saying anything wrong with a closed closet, this, that, 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 or that. But there are so many times where people put stock in those things and they forget, like you said, they major in the minors. Yeah, you know, or, my or, or, or or people will attach the word ministry to everything. everything. Single little and thing. And I think that's where I'm that's, really going. Right, right. We attach ministry to everything. And when we had our closed ministry at my previous work, we had a we had a house that we owned and we turned into a closed closet, like. But what we did is when people came there, and it was more like a little thrift shop because we had the mm-hmm. rooms within the house mm-hmm. were like um, compartmentalized. Mm-hmm. Like you could go to the you go to the kitchen area, you could get dishes, right. pots, pans, stuff like Canned that. Canned goods in the living room right. area, we had furniture. You know, we had some furniture items. Right. We had lamps. You know, we had home decorative things. If you went into the bedroom sections, we had racks. Well, y'all had clothes on them. <laughs> uh, uh, section out by size. Y'all had right? y'all had that thing laid out like I killed it. Man, we had a thing laid out like the Goodwill. <laughs> I'm telling, we had it laid out like the. I'm serious. Um, yeah. and when we did, but what we required is that anybody that visited yep. and everything was free because it was all donated. Everything was free. Absolutely. We took the stuff that was donated to us. Obviously, we had to weed through it. If mm. we, we were like, we can't get us, we throw it away. But the really good stuff we kept, we washed, we we did everything. They would have to sign. Right. And they would put their name, address, number, and then we would ask them if they like a Bible study. Yeah. Right. So what we would do is every fourth Sunday after evening service, it was called service for the master. We would get together. We would distribute all of those. We would take visitors cards of those who were not members of the church who had visited in that month. And we would take those visitations to the closed closet. We would divvy them up. We will all start calling. Mm-hmm. We call the clo- we call the people from the closed closet. Ask them, hey, we noticed you visit. 
you know, our close calls. And on this day, we just want to make sure you got everything. Was everything good? Were you treated well? Yes, yes, yes. Hey, listen, we'd like to set up a Bible study with you. Would you mind having a Bible study with us, man? I got several Bible studies off of, out, out of mm -hmm. that. Some people will say no, but then I will say, well, appreciate it. These are our service times. Would you mind coming visit us? Yeah, we, we might visit one day. Man, we had several people come visit us because of that. So we use that work for the ministry because right. really there was only one ministry and we know people will call any and everything a ministry. Acts 20, 24, Paul said, but none of these things move me, neither count on myself, neither count on my life dear unto myself, myself that I might finish my course with joy, joy. and the ministry, ministry, right? Which, which the Lord has given me, right? right. Like there is only one ministry to testify the gospel. Mm -hmm. There's only one ministry. And you know, what's crazy because it's like, yeah, you, know, you start seeing like, it, it, it becomes ridiculous at some point because right. it's like, we got a, we got a microphone ministry. Yeah. And that just simply means that before the song leader come up or the preacher come up, somebody come up there and make sure the mic is on and is in place. But again, that's how people want to feel like it's a thing of elevation. Mm -hmm. Like I got to be set apart for something. Why can't I just be, why can't you just say, hey, brother Ford, can you make sure the mic's on, make sure we got batteries? It ain't got to be a ministry. You yeah. know, it ain't got to be a ministry. But everybody want a title. Yeah. You know, did you know Adam? Adam was the director of ministry. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you know? I am the, I am the music minister. <laughs> did, you, did you know Eve was the first lady? Yeah, Eve was the first lady. She really was. <laughs> like, like, she really was the first lady. But, but the final work of the church as our time escapes us, even though we've, ex we've been graciously extended, it, it's just, man, we still, it seems like we just run out of time. The edifying of the body. So the body, the word, edif the edification is the process of building up. Uh -huh. And so the body is built up when the saints are perfected and they work the ministry. The result is the body of right. Christ is built up. In Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, the church is the body. Mm -hmm. So when the saints are perfected and they work the ministry, the church is edified. This happens, it's built up. This happens two ways. It happens externally uh -huh. through evangelism. Acts 2, 41, and they yep. that gladly received his word were baptized. Same day were added unto, the church. unto them about 3,000 souls. Acts 2, 47. And the Lord, and they were uh, worshiping God and having faith, praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And the church is built up internally when all the members use their talents right. in the church for the edification of the body. Romans chapter 12, yep. verse three through eight, you got exhortation, ministry, teaching, giving, leading. You know, those that show mercy, they right. do it with cheerfulness. All of these gifts that God gave and talents for members of the church, they use those to build the church up You know um, what internally. I, what I say about Romans 12, you know how you see these signs say BY, OB, or whatever. Mm -hmm. People have these functions and stuff, and they told you to bring some. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, man, you got to bring some to the point. Yeah. You got to. You got to bring something. You got to bring something to the party. You got to bring something. Well, listen, our time is spent. If you'd like to reach out to us and submit questions or comments regarding the show, we'd love to address those, even use them to drive show content. Our email address is make it plain, hab22 at gmail.com. May God bless you and keep you as you seek to conform your will to his. <laughs> <laughs>